He fed them with finest wheat and satisfies them with honey from the rock. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. You are very welcome to Mass and today the feast of the most holy body and blood of Christ, sometimes known in Latin as Corpus Christi. And every time we come to Mass, we celebrate Christ's death and resurrection. And we know that he told us on the occasion of the Ascension that he'd be with us always until the end of time. Well, he's primarily with us in the Holy Eucharist. We eat his body and we drink his blood. And anyone who does that, Jesus says, draws life from me. So to prepare ourselves to celebrate Mass, we call to mind our sins and ask the Lord to forgive us. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may always experience in our lives the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Alleluia, Alleluia. I am the living bread which has come down from heaven, says the Lord. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb was sacrificed, his disciples said to Jesus, Where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and you will meet a man carrying a pitcher of water. Follow him and say to the owner of the house which he enters, The master says, 
Where is my dining room in which I can eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large upper room furnished with couches all prepared. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them and prepared the Passover. Now as they were eating, he took some bread and when he had said the blessing, he broke it and he gave it to them. Take it, he said, this is my body. Then he took a cup and when he had returned thanks, he gave it to them and they all drank from it. And he said to them, this is my blood, the blood of the covenant, which is to be poured out for many. I tell you solemnly, I shall not drink any more wine until the day I drink the new wine in the kingdom of God. After psalms had been sung, they left for the Mount of Olives. The Gospel of the Lord. The Feast of Corpus Christi was instituted by Pope Urban IV in, in 1264. Around this time, unorthodox views regarding the Eucharist were circulating and the feast was instituted basically to counteract these views. The Catholic teaching on the Eucharist has always been the same. We believe that the consecrated bread is not just a symbol of Christ's presence, it is Christ himself. Here, we fundamentally differ from our Protestant friends. Jesus did say in the Bible, my flesh is real food and my blood is real drink. Catholics proclaim their faith in this doctrine by coming to Mass every Sunday and receiving him worthily in Holy Communion. It presupposes, however, that they are trying to live good Christian lives in line with the commandments of God, the Ten Commandments and the Beatitudes, and also church teaching that can't be excluded. No one is obliged to receive Holy Communion at every Mass. They may be recommended, but they're not obliged. And no one should judge a person if they refrain from receiving the Eucharist. There could be a host of reasons for doing so. The Church obliges every Catholic to receive the Eucharist once a year during the Easter season, but it asks Catholics to come to Mass whether they receive or not every Sunday. Recently, some Catholics have, and some people in general, have mistakenly got the impression that the Church has changed its teaching on the admission of people to Holy Communion. Especially people who have not been married in the Church or are living together or are divorced and remarried outside the church. Well, the church hasn't changed its teaching. What Pope Francis wanted is that clergy listen with more compassion and sensitivity to each person's situation and leave no stone unturned to help them return to the sacraments of penance and the Holy Eucharist. What the Pope is dead against is priests acting in a cavalier way, just laying down a law without being pastorally accommodating. But despite what we read in the papers, it doesn't mean that the Church has gone soft on the teaching about the prohibition of divorce, the permanence of marriage, or our worthiness to receive the Holy Eucharist. If someone has fallen away from the practice of their faith and no longer goes to Sunday Mass but wish to return, the first port of call is the sacrament of penance, not the Eucharist. That stands to reason. The situation changes if there are justifying circumstances such as illness or the pandemic or if one is dependent on others to take them to Mass, or if the weather is atrocious, or if you can't find a church, 
or if you're a child or a teenager and there's no one to go with you, the church is an understanding mother, not a harsh taskmaster. We know that there are stumbling blocks to sharing Holy Communion with other Christian bodies who don't share teaching on the Eucharist or the priesthood and a host of major moral issues as well. But Catholics too need to examine their consciousness on where they stand on these issues before receiving Holy Communion. I know some bishops, for instance, throughout the world, they feel ill at ease allowing Holy Communion to be given to politicians or even the general population whose views on important moral subjects are at variance with the Church. And that could easily happen among us as well. If it weren't for the fact that we are weak human beings, we wouldn't need Holy Communion in the first place. At Mass, we draw on his strength, which enables us to live as he taught and so reach heaven. He is the living bread come down from heaven, who brings life to our souls in the here and now, in anticipation of the eternal banquet in heaven. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, through God from through God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He as ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name. 
for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offering we here present, which we make through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and he was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that he poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and he gave it to the disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Ralph our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. 
Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who will live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring me safely to everlasting life. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him, says the Lord.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go now in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.